In this session, we are going to continue with our OAuth series and we are going to discuss OAuth 2.0 JWT bearer flow for server to server integration in Salesforce. So let's start. So sometimes for server to server communication, uh, we want to access data without interactively logging in each time the servers exchange information. For uh, these cases, we can use the JWT bearer flow. So JWT is the JSON web token flow. So this flow uses a certificate to sign the JWT request and doesn't require explicit user interaction. Uh, however, this flow requires uh, prior approval of the client app. So uh, with the OAuth 2.0 JWT bearer flow, the client posts a JWT to, uh, to the Salesforce OAuth token endpoint. Salesforce processes the JWT, which includes a digital signature and in issues a access token based on the uh, prior approval of the app. So uh, let's say we have created one connected app and we have said that admin approvers, uh, approved users uh, as the option. So and uh, then like based on the prior approval, uh, Salesforce issues the access token for those uh, specific. So let's, uh, this flow is useful when we don't want a user to uh, get in the way uh, between two server to server integration. So we also have the client credentials flow. So client credentials flow is a little new and J JWT flow was uh, has been for a long time. So uh, most, uh, most companies are now moving to the client credentials flow, uh, but JWT flow also exists and it is a certificate based uh, authentication and then the access token is issued. So for, uh, to proceed ahead, let's discuss the basics of certificate-based communication. So we all know that when we send data over the HTTPS, the data is sent in encrypted form and uh, the receiver will decrypt the data. So the S in the HTTPS stands for the secure communication. So uh, we have concepts of private keys and public keys in cryptography. So these keys are used to encrypt and decrypt sensitive data. So uh, Two main concepts uh, for these are any message that is encrypted with a certificate's public key can only be de decrypted with the certificate's private key. So public key is, as the name suggests, the key is publicly available to uh, to the providers. And let's say like um, uh, we can decrypt the message using the public key and anyone with the private key uh, of uh, that certificate can only decrypt the uh, message that was uh, encrypted by the public key. So another point I want to highlight is anyone with the access to the public key can verify that the message was created by someone access uh, who has the access to the certificate's private key. So uh, this is used. Let's say that let's say that we have a CA uh, certificate. We have a certificate authority, and that certificate authority has issued a certificate, uh, and uh, and they have also provided in the private key. Now anyone who has the access to the public key, since we know uh, pe people can uh, be provided with the public key, so anyone who has the access to the public key can verify that uh, that the uh, the message was sent using the certificates private key by someone who uh, the message was sent by someone who has the access to the certificates private key so this is done based on some mathematical calculation and we don't need to go in that deep so let's discuss what is a ca signed and self signed certificate so the main difference between a ca signed and a self signed self signed certificate is the issuer of the certificate a self-signed certificate is created, signed and issued by the subject of the certificate while a CA signed is created, signed and issued by a third party provider called certificate authority. So uh, for a self-signed certificate, there is no third party verification uh, of uh, the certificate and there is no certificate authenticity identity of the certificate owner. So self-signed self certificates are often used for testing or internal purposes, but uh, as they are not trusted by external parties who have not expected by the uh, the external parties. So, and a CA's uh, certificate authority's public key is included with the certificate. So when we go to a certificate authority and we want the certificate authority to issue a certificate, so the public key is included in that certificate, which allows the certificate to be verified by anyone that trusts the a certificate authority. So as I said, that anyone who has the access to the CS public key can verify that that uh, the message was sent by someone who has the access to the private key of the CA.
So, yep. And now let's discuss the steps that is involved in the certificates communication. So Salesforce requires a X509 certificate to be uploaded in a connected app. So firstly, we'll create a connected app in Salesforce. So we know that whenever we need to make a call in uh, from an external system to Salesforce, so we have to create a connected app. Connected app will handle the request based on uh, our need. So we have to upload a X509 certificate to the connected app. Uh, X509 certificate is a digital document that is used to authenticate the identity of an individual or organization on the internet. The third party system will make a request to the Salesforce token endpoint by sending the JWT uh, with the certificate, private certificates, private key signed using the RSA, SHA uh, 256 algorithm and plus it will contain the client ID of the connected app. So uh, the third party will get the client ID from Salesforce and uh, Using the digital certificate uploaded in the connected app, Salesforce will verify whether the center is actually the one sending or is it some imposter or someone else. So once verified, Salesforce returns the access token. Now the external application can then use the access token to access the Salesforce API on behalf of the user that was pre-approved. Now, uh, creation of a cell signed certificate. So we have two types of certificates as I discussed. One is the cell signed and one is the CA signed. For this demo, we are going to create a cell signed certificate since the CA signed has a cost associated with it. We are going to create a cell signed certificate using OpenSSL. So OpenSSL is an open source uh, SSL uh, uh, implementation through which we can create some self-signed certificates, we can create the private keys. So for that, we need to first install the OpenSSL for Windows. So for that, you can search Google and install the OpenSSL. Once you have done that, uh, we'll run this command. So uh, this command is basically like we are creating a X509 certificate. Uh, we are providing in the algorithm which is uh, needed and we are providing in the validity of the certificate, like the number of days, uh, like uh, after which it would be expired. Then we are providing in the, uh, we want, we are asking it to provide in a sales uh, key that should be stored as salesforce.key. And uh, then we want the certificate to be named as salesforce.crt. So uh, that salesforce.key file would contain the private key. So once I run this command, I'll show you how the private key looks like. So I'll go to, this is the open SSL CMD. So, I'll just uh, run that command which I showed you, the OpenSSL uh, rec uh, hyphen x509 and it will create two files, salesforce.key and salesforce.crt. So when I run it, it is asking me for some values. So I'll put input that. I'm just inputting the values. Yes, so our certificate has been created. I'll go to desktop and I'll show you. So these are the two certificates that got created, salesforce.key and salesforce uh, certificate. So this is dot the cert file and this is the key file. So if I open this file using Visual Studio Code, so this is showing us the private key. So this is the private key of the certificate, which we will use to digitally sign our uh, en encoding, base64 encoding of some values. So that we will do when we create the JWT. So let's go back. Steps that are involved in the creation of the JWT uh, assertion. So that assertion we are going to send to the Salesforce token endpoint. And firstly, before creating that assertion, let's understand what are the values that are required. Firstly, we'll create a JWT header. The header will include the algorithm, which we are going to use to sign the certificate. So we are going to use the RS256 algorithm. So this is uh, a JWT for the header. Then we are going to base 64 encode that value. Uh, after we encode the, it to the base 64 value, it would look something like this. Uh, after that, we are going to create a JSON claim set uh, and it should be in this format. So it's uh, it is showing us the issuer. It is showing uh, the EXP, uh, that is the date of the expiry. It is showing the audience. Uh, audience should be login dots, either the production URL or the test URL, sandbox URL for sandbox. And we have the subject. Subject is for, let's say for the experience cloud side, the subject must contains the 
user's username. So uh, the issuer is the client ID of the connected app in Salesforce. And uh, the expiry is the Unix timestamp when we want the token to expire. After that, we will base64 encode the, this JSON claim set. So after base64 encoding the claim set in the previous step, uh, we uh, we have we know we have the private key of the certificate and now we will sign it using the rsa2256 uh, algorithm so uh, the string that we will sign is base64 and code the header the header which i showed you which contained the uh, this is the header alg so plus dot uh, so uh, these this needs to be in a string uh, base64 and code is a string plus we will do a dot and then we will encode the base64 uh, JWT claim set. So this is the claim set. We will encode it in the base64 format. And after that, we are going to sign it. Uh, so we are going to use the unique key as the private key of the certificate. And we are going to use the algorithm as the RS256. Though, so the final assertion that we want the connected app to have is the header dot uh, base64 encode the JSON claim set plus dot base64 encoded signature. So this is the assertion that is going to be sent to the Salesforce uh, token endpoint. So uh, we need to provide two, you, uh, two parameters. So one is the grant type. The grant type should be this, where we are uh, telling the Salesforce system that we are we are going to use the JWT bearer flow. Uh, so and the second would be the assertion. So this is the assertion which we got by encoding all the values and uh, so adding that uh, by a dot. And this is the token Salesforce token and which we are going to make a post request to. So now let's see a demo in Python. So I have uh, we have a I have a code in Python which is going to create a JWT assertion uh, in Salesforce, and then uh, we are going to receive the access token. But before that, we are going to create a connected app in Salesforce. So for the connected app, I'll go to App Manager. I'll go to New Connected App. I'll name it JWT flow test. I'm going to enable the OAuth settings for the callback URL. I'm going to provide to slash callback. Uh, so I'm going to select uh, use digital signatures and I'm going to choose a salesforce.cert file, which, which we created using the open SSL. So this is the salesforce.cert file. I'm going to provide in some scopes. So for the testing purpose, I'm providing all the scopes, but uh, you need to only provide the scopes that are necessary. Other than that, all the settings are good. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to click uh, the connected app is saved. I'm going to click manage consumer details. So this will redirect you to the consumer key and the consumer secret. Just copy the consumer key and we need to use that in the issuer. So when we create the claim set for the JSON, we have to provide in the issuer. So we are going to use it here. Uh, for the subject, just give your username. For the file name, uh, since my uh, the private key is present in the salesforce.key file, I've named it that. And uh, I'm going to use, I'm uh, going to use Python. In the Python, we have, uh, I'm going to read the private key from the file. So it is going to read this, this value and store it uh, in this variable, private key variable. So uh, after that, we uh, we have this claim set and uh, we have the headers. The headers I've provided in the same that Salesforce wanted. So and uh, uh, I'm going to use the Python JWT encode method where I'm going to provide in the claim set. We have the private key. We have the algorithm. Uh, that is this and we have provided in the header. So from the code perspective, all looks good. I'll just quickly go to the connected app. The connected app, uh, you can see I have uh, added this digital certificate. So this certificate, uh, which got created with the open SSL. So, so now I've saved this Python file. One more uh, thing that is left to do is uh, approving the user. So I'll go to manage. In the manage, I have selected all users may self approve, but I need to choose all admin users may admin approved users are pre approved. And I'm going to click save. Uh, 
uh, now I have to select in the profile. I'll go into profile and I'm clicking system administrator. Click save. Selected the system admin profile uh, to be pre-approved, uh, to be approved, uh, to be one of the approved users. So we have selected the admin profile to be one of the approved user. So now we are going to use the user agent flow to approve uh, our user. So what we are going to do is I, uh, I've created this URL where we have provided in my domain uh, name and I'm going to use the slash or two slash authorize uh, where we have the response type equals to token. We have the client ID and we have the redirect URL. This client ID is from the same connected app which we created previously. So uh, basically this is a, a way to authorize a user using the user agent flow. So I'll copy that URL. I'll open that in a new tab. We have successfully got the access token here and the user has been authorized uh, with the below with these scopes you can see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my Python program again. I'll go it go to uh, this file Python file. So uh, and I'm going to click run. Uh, and we have got the access token. Awesome. So we this access token we can use in our further request to Salesforce uh, by providing in the authorization header with this access token. So this is how you can use the JWT bearer flow in Salesforce, uh, which is basically using a certificate based communication and then access make a request using the access token that is provided by Salesforce. So thanks everyone for watching this video and do subscribe the channel for more such videos in the future. Thanks everyone.